G'day everyone, I'm here with Josh Brown. Josh is the head coach and founder of TST Total Strength Training, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we're excited to be talking to Josh in the lead up to the Team Champs. Welcome today, mate. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I've just realized I always call it TST and I just was like, wait, what's the actual abbreviation? This is Total Strength Training, right? <laughs> yeah, Total Strength Training, TST. Yeah, easy. Excellent. And uh, before we hit record, I was just speaking to Josh and admittedly, I haven't actually met you in person before, or at least I don't think we have anyway. And um, before we hit record, we're just chatting a little bit about who TST is and what and what their, uh, what your business is and what, what your um, history is. And so you've been lifting for a little while. So I guess that's the first question I want to ask is, tell us a little about yourself. Who are you? What's your coaching business? What's your personal training business? And, and what's a little bit of the background there? Yeah, sure, man. Like, um, yeah, as I was mentioning to you earlier, so I've been coaching or personal training just under two years now. Um, so yeah, probably why you didn't hear much of me prior is just the first year of like, me having clients compete was last year. Um, so we obviously did this comp last year. So I had first four lifters compete there and just a few in between. So yeah, man, still fairly fresh, but um, yeah, no, I've been enjoying it. And so it's, yeah, so TST is not a gym, is it? It's like your personal training brand. And you said you were training clients out of a gym in Kilsyth. Is it mostly in person or is it partly online? Is it a bit of, bit of either? Yeah, for the moment, it's mainly in person, a bit of online just alongside that. But yeah, I just I work out of um, Spartan's Gym, Kilsyth, which is more of a commercial gym. But yeah, I just pay rent, run my own business out of there. And then, yeah, have a little powerlifting community within it. That's awesome. I was, um, you know, when I first started lifting, we were kind of doing something similar, just in a commercial gym. That's what it was like back then, um, where there wasn't a lot of kind of gyms. And I, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of powerlifting gyms out kind of in Kilsyth way. So it's freaking awesome that you're doing that. And in such a short time to be having a team competing, not just the team champs, but in the uh, premier bracket, which we're going to talk about in a second. Mm. Before we go into that, I want to ask you about last year. Like you said, um, you've only been personal training for about two years and coaching for about that time. Yet uh, you sent a, sent a team into our team champs. How did that kind of come about? Did you send an inquiry to us? Because I wasn't the meet director back then. It was Liz and Nguyen. Um, mm. How did you guys get involved in team champs? And why did you want to get involved last year? Yeah, man. Um, I think I just I was just scrolling through Instagram, and that's just where it's where you see everything these days. So, yeah, I saw that, and um, yeah, I, I had enough lifters that I thought would be keen enough to to go on. I think I had three lifters originally. Um, so I think when I signed up, I was still looking for the fourth. Um, because one of my clients actually that I was keen on having, he actually tore his pec. Um, <laughs> a bit prior to the comp, so he was he was out for that period of time. Um, so I just had to look for someone else and kind of throw them in the deep end. So yeah, ended up getting four lifters coming on. I think I had a couple changes in between, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I had, yeah, I had two lifters. So that was um, Ella and Sophie. They competed last year. Um, so they'd both done comps before. And then I threw the other two. Um, I think they did their first meet. So I think one of them was like, uh, <laughs> I think I started coaching him maybe five, six weeks prior. Um, and then, yeah, he jumped into the, to the comp pretty early on. And then I had another one that just, he's kind of transitioned from bodybuilding to powerlifting. And we kind of did that within a 12 week prep. So yeah, had two, two fairly fresh lifters into it. And then, um, yeah, two more that have been in it a bit longer. Yeah. That's so good that you just jumped into it. <laughs> um, kind of like, uh, jumping straight into the deep, deep end, which I really respect because a lot of people, you know, they get a little bit scared and they're like, oh, I'm not ready yet. And mm -hmm. they kind of make up all these stories, but you've just, you know, taken these clients and said, Hey, you're going to do a comp and you're going to do this, this team comp that I've but I don't know what it is, but we're going to have a go and see what it's like. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the funny thing is that last year we had 13 teams compete. And obviously at the time we hadn't talked to anything. There was no talks or any ideas even from my, from my end about potentially going to two days or having 22 teams like we have now. And when we had such interest this year in, uh, for Team Champs, had so many teams, like we even had to turn down maybe half a dozen teams um, wanting to do the comp. It was only logical. It only made sense to go, okay, can we make this a little bit bigger? Okay, if I'm going to make it bigger, how are we going to divide the teams across days? Blah, 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 blah. And then this idea about Premier Bracket and Challengers Bracket came up and obviously had to decide who's going to be in the Premier Bracket in the first year because there was no formal qualification. Like teams didn't know what they're getting themselves into last year. But you guys were actually a pretty strong team last year. I think you guys maybe came sixth or seventh. And so you've kind of like landed yourself in the Premier Bracket. And I know there are lots of other clubs that are currently actually in the Challengers Bracket technically who are also very talented teams and have very good lifters in them. But we wanted to reward the teams that had come to our comps in the past. It's like, okay, you were there last year. You deserve to be there. Um, what's it like on your end? Like, have you done much thinking about, about what that means? Are you, do you feel a bit of pressure going like, oh shit, we're up against the big boys now. Like there's some really strong teams mm -hmm. out there. Um, what's, what's the kind of feeling like between you and, and the guys that you're coaching? Oh, look, man. Um, I think very similar to last year. I'm throwing, yeah, three of my clients that have just done a novice last year into the deep end. 
Um, the only kind of, I guess, more veteran lifter we have is Sophie, who compared last year. Um, so I guess, you know, they've built up them confidence from um, doing the novice that year beforehand. Um, and yeah, we're not really putting too much pressure on ourselves, just trying to get the numbers that we want to hit. So, you know, pretty confident. Um, yeah, man, like we earned our spot last year. So pretty happy to just keep pushing forward and do what we can do best. So, yeah, man. I think that's the best attitude. Pressure involved, yeah. yeah, I think that's the best attitude. And I think a few other people have said something similar, like uh, not trying to force anything like i mean ultimately in many ways you can't force things like you can only do the best you can and whether it's a yeah. world championship or it's a novice comp like your lifters are still training hard and they want to do the best they can and yeah. um being pressured is not going to make you lift anymore yeah and oftentimes <laughs> it actually makes you lift worse so yeah, that's a really course. really good attitude can I you think, introduce um, to yeah. yeah go go sure man I, I was gonna say just the thing that i tell myself and i tell my lifters like as long as we're doing all the right things as long as we're ticking all the boxes that we need to do like you can't do anything else you know so as long as we've got that in place and yeah, everyone should be happy. Exactly right. If you're doing your training yeah. and hitting your nutrition stuff and you're sleeping well, you, you can't force your way forward is what I always say. You can't mm. force your way to get stronger. You can just do what you can and hopefully things move forward. Can you uh, give us a bit of an introduction about who your lifters are? You kind of mentioned Sophie who's done our comp before, I think, but who are the four yeah. lifters? What are their weight classes? How did you pick them? How did you, uh, how did you work that out? Yeah, sure, man. So um, yeah, I guess I'll start with Sophie. So Sophie, she's competed um, quite a few years prior to me coaching her. Um, so, yeah, she competed last year. Um, this year, she's going to be competing in the 100 kilo plus. Um, I've actually just started re-coaching her since the last comp. So we had a bit of a break of coaching um, after the last meet, um, which is all right. She's been following more bodybuilding kind of stuff. So maybe eight weeks ago, we kind of started prepping. Um, her bodybuilding kind of training, like it was, it was fairly close to SBD. So just for the moment, we've been acquiring some skills. So I think the goal for her is to, um, yeah, maybe match last year's total or push the needle, maybe a little bit more ahead. Um, so yeah, it's just the fun prep that we got with her. Um, she's easy to coach. She gives me heaps of information. So yeah, it's pretty easy. On the other side of things, we've got, um, yeah, three of the lifters that I took to our novice last year doing their first sanctioned meet at this one. So I've got Chris Bone, who should be in the under 82 and a half kilo weight class um yeah his lifts are tracking on well um yeah man we're just trying to make progression week to week just building confidence with the squats um he's fairly confident with his bench press um deadlifts is kind of having some niggles that he's working through so i think last comp he deadlifted 170 is his third attempt um we pulled 200 in training so i think if we can try and match something around that at comp should be pretty happy um then i have matt white who should be competing in the under 100s um, so yeah, same thing. He competed at novice last year. So we're just moving towards just, um, again, I think most of my lifters we're we're hitting bigger numbers than what we had in training that we did our last meet. So regardless of what happens, um, yeah, we're making gains. They all seem to be pretty happy with how it's all tracking along. Um, and then, yeah, last we've got a lung, um, one of my big boys. I think he did, I think he totaled the most in the novice that we ran last year. Um, so he's actually watching last year, um, at team champ. So he's pretty keen on it. Um, from a year prior so i think he's most excited to get into it so no he should be producing some decent numbers his bench is going pretty well all his other lifts are fairly decent so just working through some niggles like we always do but um yeah man i think we've got a pretty strong team going forward uh you said how do you want to pronounce the name alung alung yeah so i think his real name and is in- it's van bowie van bowie thong but um i think it's just yeah it's much easier for us yes yeah, um go, and he's go in the one, 125 yeah. kilo class you said 125, 125 right? yeah, he's a big, he's a big boy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you've got a pretty good spread there. Like you've got two, yeah, uh, three, three guys, one girl, a bit of experience, a bit of, uh, you know, less experience, I suppose. Like first kind of sanction comps. Um, mm. How did you kind of like pick out your team? I know last year you kind of said you did it kind of like last minute and you had to scrap someone together and figure it out. Was there a little bit yeah. more choice this year? Like I imagine, you know, over another you know, year of building your business, maybe you've got a little bit more, slightly bigger cl- client roster. Was it a bit more of a choice or was it a little, was it uh, still kind of something that you kind of said, if anybody wants to do it, happy to participate. Let's have a go. Yeah, man. Like um, I'm always happy just to have any client that wants to compete. If they want to up the stakes a bit, they can. So I think both Chris and um, Chris and Matt Express, they want to do a comp sometime this year. I knew I had team champs coming up. So yeah, invited them on pretty early. Um, along like this time last year was pretty keen. Um, on the comp so he was kind of always set in stone to, to be competing um sophie on the other hand i was actually yeah didn't have like too much contact with her um so we weren't yeah really thinking about competing until i just kind of asked her towards the end because i actually was just looking for yeah one more lifter um to fill out the space so yeah, yeah man, I not a heap of planning so yeah 
I wasn't sure if it was Sophie or who it was, but I, if I'm not mistaken, mm. in your initial, um, in your initial uh, nominations, I think you had Ella lifting, I and then obviously yeah. she got, she got swapped out for I forget who it was. Talk us through mm. what happened there. So Ella was planning to lift, and because I'm pretty sure she competed at comp last year, or at least a different she did. comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she did. Um, she was on the team last year. So I really only had three lifters ready to ready to compete. So I put Ella in there. So um, we we're kind of planning with her to have a bit of a longer off season after she competed at nationals. Um, so we thought, you know, if we couldn't find a space, she could just do it, um, have a bit of fun with it. Um, but yeah, I kind of found Sophie just a bit more in between there. So okay, so Ella was a little bit more of a placeholder, I suppose. In the meantime, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then Sophie was able to come on board. Okay, that's really good because. Um, mm. Yeah, I think uh, Ella was in the 67 or 75 class. It's like really hotly contested. Now Sophie's in the 100 plus, which is generally an empty class. But I was saying this to one of the other coaches recently that actually in the 100 women's, 100 plus women's, there's, I think there's actually three lifters and it's actually going to be oh, yeah. not easy to win that class. I mean, there's no easy class <laughs> to win, which is really exciting. Yeah, no, that's good. What would you say would be your goals in this kind of comp for your team and for yourself? Like, of course, do the best that they can and you know have a fun day out. Is there anything more concretely that you're kind of like hoping to achieve? I mean, the talent in this comp is like super high and I think it's going to be very hard to, uh, to place, but mm. what would you say are your goals or what, what are you going to, what's your benchmark? What are you going to be able to say the next day? Yep. That was a good meet. That was a success. And we're happy with it versus, okay, things didn't go to plan and, and whatnot. Yeah, sure. I think we'd be happy if, you know, we can maintain our spot um, coming into next year, um, staying in like the premier's bracket. I think that'll be good. Just keep building on that momentum, keep holding our place. Um, I think if we do that, yeah, I think that'll be that'll be a big win for us. Yeah, I think yeah. um, you know, you kind of mentioned was it the yeah, so all three of your lifters, right? Other than Sophie, are uh, competing for the first time and not you know in a in a sanctioned comp. I think one of the things that they're going to take a lot of value from is competing with so many high level lifters, like. Yeah, of course. You're going to be in that warm-up room and you're going to be looking around. It's going to be previous national champions, previous world record holders, previous so-and-sos. Like even a lot of the coaches themselves are talented athletes and extremely talented coaches. And I think, you know, what a way to be thrown into the deep end. It's almost like uh, I've been (laughs) in comps where I've almost been starstruck in the warm-up room going like, oh my God, that's so-and-so. Oh my God, that guy, you know, won nationals five times or whatever it might be. And some of the lifters, I mean, most of the people in that warm-up room, your lifters might not even recognize but, uh, mm. you know, you, you figure out pretty quick when you see someone warming up and go, oh, that guy's pretty good. Yeah, of course, man. And it I should be a good learning yeah, experience for him. Yeah, of course, man. It's definitely good for my lifters as well. You know, being in a commercial gym, you know, you can, I guess you could be like a big fish in a small pond, you know, because like not a heap of, you know, like strength training is, you know, just definitely on the rise and stuff. But unless you're doing kind of like specific powerlifting, you know, you, you kind of find if you start training in a commercial gym, you can end up getting pretty strong pretty quick if you look at your surroundings, you know, but you go to a comp, you know, of this standard as well, and you see what it's like, um, I think it's good to be surrounded with, you know, some real decent, real strong lifters, you know? Yeah, right. Like, it's like, uh, you know, a big fish in a small pond, like you said. And and when you're in a commercial gym, squatting three plates, you know, people are jaw dropped and they're all staring at you doing that. But if you walk into any decent powerlifting gym, nobody bats an eye at someone squatting 140 kilos. So um, mm. it'll just be a really good experience. And I think it'll be really, uh, really, uh, you know, a great way for them to experience something and mature and, and just learn about like just the standard that that can be out there. And I mean, I, I'm saying that as if they're as if they're uh, um, you know not going to be putting up a fight themselves. Like you know, like you said, you got some mm. a pretty decent strong team, and and if you can finish that top seven, you get to stay in the premier bracket. Um, I was going to say, what would you say are your like I guess values as a coach? You know, you've been coaching for personal training for only a couple <clears> of years. You've done a handful of comps yourself. Do you consider yourself someone who's really competitive that wants to field a team that's going to win, that's competitive yourself as an athlete and as a coach? Or what do you kind of see as like being more important for you? Yeah, look, I think I think it's important to everyone, like, you know, we're competing to be, you know, somewhat competitive um, and just have some goals, some numbers to chase after. I think, yeah, just the big thing for me and big thing for my clients is just as long as we're moving forward in some direction, you know, as long as, you know, if we place, you know, something this year, if we place a little bit higher the next year, that's that's all we're really going for, I would say. Yeah, definitely. You know, as as lifters, you know, all of my clients, I know that they're, they're tied, they're very invested in their goals and their strength. So, yeah, man. Would you say yeah, most of your lifters, are like most of the clients, are you dealing with our powerlifters, or is it a pretty even mix between you know Gen Pop, I suppose, or is everyone kind of doing strength training? I mean, I guess yeah, your business is total mix, strength training, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit of a mix. Like I definitely have um like say last year when I ran my first um novice comp, I would say it's it's more so novice powerlifters. 
um, on manly coaching. Um, and even the lifters that don't necessarily power lift, like they still hold value and like SPD and getting stronger in that sense, even if they don't have, um, you know, even if they don't want to compete in the future, they still very much train them like powerlifters. In the same way that I'll train like a gen pop lifter, um, you know, as long as their goals are kind of in line with strength, I won't really change their training too much as if I would, you know, prepping someone for a meet, you know. Um, so yeah, I do, yeah, do have a fair amount of like novice powerlifters and then just some gen pops too, but oftentimes the goals are very much the same. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. I mean, um, like you said, it's good training is good training. It kind of doesn't really matter what mm. your, um, specific goals are. Like, obviously if you're, if you're not competing, maybe there's less pressure to do SPD, but similarly stuff, it's, it's similar stuff and, and obviously put a lot of value in just like getting stronger, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've had a good chance to take a look at the, uh, the lifting list and the lifting order and, and how much you're fussing about what, the, what other lifters are doing. I wanted to ask you if you mm. had any uh, insights or, or uh, you know, kind of how do you see the day panning out? Did you, do you catch much of what's going on on Instagram, watching people's training, challenges bracket, premier bracket? Uh, what is, what's your hot take on, on what the field is looking like? Yeah, I've been seeing a bit of that. I know, obviously, um, Lou Lifts did quite well last year and do well in most um, most competitions. So I would assume they'd um, have a good chance at placing or um, taking it for this one. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I, I've seen Apex. Apex seem to be doing... Not too bad. I know um, I've competed alongside Gabriel um, a couple times in the past. His list seemed to be going quite well, so I'm quite intrigued to see how he goes um, on the day. Um, in terms of the challenges bracket, um, not too sure how much I've seen of that. I've definitely seen a bit of the, the chads. Um, <laughs> they're a funny bunch. I know I know, um, I know. Remy. Um, he's a funny lad. So they look like real strong lifters as well alongside that. So I'm, I'm keen to see what they can do. Yeah, the Chads seem to be the talk of the town, and I and uh, I've yeah. said this in a couple of other episodes. They they do like leaning into their villain uh, persona. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> it keeps it entertaining, man. Like powerlifting could be like, as you mentioned, like earlier, like you know, I guess when you're competing early days, like you just be a bit boring, you know. Like, but if you you know doing what you're doing, actually having you know conversations around just people talking, like it just it makes it more interesting, makes people a bit more invested. Yeah, I mean, you know. <clears throat> The long, the age old question has always been, how do you make powerlifting more viable yeah. commercially? How do you make powerlifting more interesting to the spectator? And my answer is really simple. It needs a storyline. You need to have mm. a story and you watch any sport, any major sport. I don't know what sports you're into, but there's always a storyline. It's like the top players, traded teams. Now they're playing against their old team or this fighter or talk shit about this fighter or this tennis player had this story go on and they missed on this, this big tournament and blah 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 blah. there's got to be this mm. kind of like dialogue in the lead up to an event whereas if you don't yeah, have that discussion then there's nothing like there's no excitement and so that's what we're trying to do with these these uh, discussions and all the social media posts and a little bit of the banter it's, it's trying to create some storylines and try to create a little bit of sense of like oh what's going to happen here mm. um so you don't you're not so sure on the challenge bracket although like you said the uh the the chad seems to be one of the favorites and lulu i think that's a really good pick as well they won last year I'm finding it hard because there's so many good teams on the cha on the premier bracket, like Lou Lift. You mentioned Apex. I'm looking at teams like Elemental. I'm looking at teams like JPS, who come second in the past. Well, Strength mm. Culture have an all women's outfit who are fucking powerhouses as well. So it's going to be a yeah. really tough day of lifting. Are there any individual classes that you're particularly looking forward to? Um, you know, ones where you've looked at the the lineup and you're going, oh man, that's going to be really tough to pick. Are there any individual weight classes or, or people that you're keen to meet or, or to watch? Yeah, sure, man. I think um, not knowing like too many of the lifters involved, like the 82 and a half kilo weight class, because I think normally that's where a lot of people's just body weight sit. So there's normally, you know, seems to be a fair few lifters in that. Um, that and under 100 kilo weight class, um, just to see, like I'm 100 kilos myself. So it's kind of be good to see what level of lifters are doing there as well. So yeah, I guess those two classes. Um, yeah. Most I think naturally there's... I think naturally there's a tendency to be interested in your own class, right? It's like, okay, what's yeah, the standards definitely. like and how would I yeah. go here and, and, and how, uh, how, how good are these guys? Cause I think they're going to be very good. Mm. Um, no, excellent. I think it's going to be a really fun day. And, uh, the change, the last date for changes is only a week away. Holy smokes. Okay. He's a week away today. Uh, tonight, I know you made like your change, like I said to you last week, and obviously that was a very practical decision, but the talk seems to be that a lot of teams are going to be making changes at the last minute. It doesn't sound like you guys are going to be doing so, but do you expect there to be a lot of changes? Do you expect a lot of teams to be doing this whole strategic uh, swapping lifters out to put other lifters in that are more competitive or finding gaps in the weight classes or changing weight classes? Is that something that you're expecting to see? And are you actually excited to wake up on Saturday and check what the changes have been? 
<laughs> um, not too sure, man. Like, I would assume, I guess, you know, you've got that competitive side of it. People want to win and stuff. But I don't know. You'd think that, you know, if you have a, a an athlete lifting for like, you know, 10 weeks or 8, 10 weeks prepping for a comp and then you're like, ah, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're on the sidelines. you got someone else. So, I don't know, man. I'm not sure how many actual, you know, coaches would be doing that to their athletes if they're, you know, keen to get on board. But I don't know, man. It'll be keen to see. Interesting to see what happens. It's a hard conversation, isn't it? It's kind of uh, almost a little bit <laughs> yeah. unfair. You know, you've, you've been prepping someone for so long and it's like, sorry. But at the same time, you know, it's interesting. I've had kind of two um, different opinions on that. So I don't know if you've mm. caught them, but in the conversation I had with Vinay from Avia, he was kind of on your, on your, from your perspective, said similar things. It's like, look, you can't do that to people. People invest a lot of effort and energy into their training and to turn around to say someone looks sorry, you're not lifting is, you know, something that he just wouldn't want to do. Mm. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I had um, Daniel Featherston from SRC Strength Collective kind of say, well, it's a team sport and you've got to do what's right for the team. And, and you know, lifters that are there for the team are going to take it on the chin and know that that's the right thing to do for the team. So it's an interesting dynamic and I'm curious to see how yeah. many changes we're going to see next week. Yeah, of course, man. I guess you can you can look at two spaces of it as well. And I guess um, those kind of teams that do prioritize those stronger lifters and kind of want to be the best team, I guess it puts them in a position where they, they want to earn their spot again, you know, through training. Um, through the next year so yeah it can go both ways man for sure look mate it's mm. been a pleasure to talk to you and just get a bit of an insight into who's josh brown who's tst and i'm excited to have you guys at our second time around for this comp because um you know one thing i really value is uh consistency and loyalty and you were at our comp last year and you guys did really well so we're pumped to have you in the premier bracket this year bringing down a good team uh of lifters it's gonna be a freaking awesome day and yeah we're just excited to have you so thanks for making the time to uh, chat with me today man Nah, of course, man. Thanks for having me on board. Appreciate it.